Hey everyone, welcome back to Code of the Row. Let's create a simple cinematic or a simple cutscene in Unreal Engine. So I'm gonna click on this cube up here and then under all classes, I'll look for the Cine camera actor and I can just, let's say, put this in the intro over here. And then I'll save this and I'll add a new level sequence. And I'll just leave the name as new level sequence and hit save. And now you'll see this, you'll see sequencer pop up as it says in the tab here. And you can hold control and scroll in and out on your mouse wheel out is zooming out. And you can adjust how long you want the cinematic to be by dragging this red bar around. So I'll just do, I guess, 120 frames. And at 30 FPS, that's equal to four seconds. And you can change the FPS over here by clicking on this FPS button. So if I change it to 120, you'll see that, um, oh, this actually adjusts to my four seconds timer. It'll show up as close to 480 FPS. So yeah, I guess I'll just try this, 120 FPS. And then I'll just drag my camera actor right in here, or you can click on this add button. And now you'll be able to see the perspective of the camera. If you want to stop piling, you can click on this up arrow like so. So I'll click on the camera to get back. And then under transform, I can just drop this down for location, rotation, and scale. And I can click on this uh, keyframe button to just add a keyframe of where my bar is. So I need to add this to the very center. And I want to start exactly at zero. Okay, so I think I'll just start here and then click on this keyframe button where the transform is just to um, start from here. And then I'll go straight to the end. And then I'll do something like uh, I'll have the camera go to right in front of the character like this. And then I'll select the keyframe again. So when we drag this, you'll see our camera angle kind of spins around right to the front of our character's face. And I'll stop piloting by clicking this up arrow. I'll save all and then I want to go add a trigger volume. So I'm just going to hit this button up here to add an actor and I'll look for a trigger volume right here. And I want to add this to where my character spawns. So my character is going to spawn right here and then I'll just make it a little bigger just like that. So this looks good to me. And now that we've set up our camera, I'm going to right click and go to blueprint and create a blueprint interface. And I'll call this BPI underscore sequence trigger. And I moved it to its own folder just because it's getting a bit cluttered in there. So once you open up BPI sequence trigger, we can change the name of this new function to play sequence trigger, just like that. And then I'll hit compile. Make sure you hit compile or else you won't see this in your interfaces when you add this to your BP third person. Now I'll head back to my folder, go to third person, go to blueprints, open up BP third person character, go to class settings, and then under implemented interfaces, we're gonna add that BPI sequence trigger. And now when I hit compile, I should be able to see it under my interfaces over here. So you'll see this play sequence trigger and that's all we need. So now I'm gonna go to my third person class and I'm actually gonna move this level just a bit forward because we're gonna do an on actor overlap. So basically when I step forward, Actually, you know what? I will move this back and I'll move this right here. So if I take a step, it should trigger this camera, level sequence, and so on. And this is using a trigger volume. So I'm going to click on this three dots or this three squares, which is a blueprint icon, and open a level blueprint. And now while this is open, drag this out so it's a little window. And I'm going to right click and look for a on actor begin overlap. And don't forget that it's going to overlap with whatever's selected in your outliner. So I need to just click. So I selected this trigger volume. And now when I right click and look for on actor begin overlap, it's going to show trigger volume in parentheses. And I'm going to call a do once. And for other actor, I'm going to connect to a does object implement interface. And the interface we're looking for is that BPI sequence trigger that we created. And if this is true, then I'm going to connect this to a branch and call out the true node in order to check if it's true or false. So if it's true, then I want to play that movie target sequencer. Now, the easiest way to get this play is just by going to your outliner and I'm going to drag in that new level sequence or whatever you called it in here. And I'll drag this out and just look for the play node. So I'm going to get sequence player like so. And then I'll drag out sequence player and look for the play just like that. And if it's true, we're going to play this. And now I want to make sure my character can't move around. So for the other actor that does implement this interface, we're going to drag this other actor out again and we're going to disable the input. And I'll connect it here. And this is just so our character cannot run around while the sequencer is playing. And then from our sequence player, we're just going to get the duration of how long this cinematic is. So I'll do get duration. And then I also want to do qualified frame time to seconds. And I also want to get the duration. And then from qualified frame time to seconds, I'm going to delay it and it'll automatically connect to the duration because I only want to disable the input for the duration of this camera. And once that's done, I'm going to enable input like so. And make sure you connect your other actor from the very beginning again to this target for enable input, just so we know which character is getting their input enabled. And now let me just expand this for a bit so we can just go over this briefly and I'll hit compile. 
So essentially, on actor begin overlap, we're checking if our object or our character in this case implements this interface called VPI sequence trigger. And then we're just going to do this once because we don't want to get spammed with our cinematic. And if it's true, if we do implement this interface, we're going to play that movie sequencer that we created, disable input so we can't move around for the duration of the movie sequencer. And then we're going to re-enable the input after it's done. So let's try this out. And now when I run into the trigger volume, I can't move around. Okay, there we go. So I can start moving it right after it's done. And yeah, that's how you create a pretty simple cutscene in any game that you're creating. Thanks for watching Code of Grow. Like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.